section 9.6, polar coordinates. When we learn about polar coordinates, it is a different way to represent where a point is in space. What we're used to doing is representing a coordinate as a rectangular coordinate or using the rectangular coordinate system. In the rectangular coordinate system, we have an x-axis, and a y-axis, and to represent this particular coordinate, we say how far over is it on the x, how far is it on the y, so we could represent this coordinate, for example, as 5, 3. Polar coordinates are represented as in a different way, and you might think to yourself, why do we need a different way to represent a coordinate? Polar coordinates are typically used when we are looking down on something, so as an aerial view. So as you can see down here, these graphs are what we use to represent polar coordinates, and we'll talk about it more later. But you can kind of imagine that you're looking down on something Here is the center, and you want to know how far away is it. Kind of imagine that you're looking down at the North Pole and you're trying to find a polar bear over here. How do we represent where the polar bear is? All right, so back up to our essential questions. What is the difference between the rectangular coordinate system and the polar coordinate system? A rectangular coordinate system is represented by x comma y. The rectangular, or I'm sorry, the polar coordinate system, we're going to use r for the radius and theta for the angle. r and theta. And r is represented as a radian. We're using a radius, so, I'm sorry, theta is represented as a radian. We're using a radius here, so it would make sense that we would use a radian for our angle. What does the origin represent? The origin in a polar coordinate means that we moved zero on a radius and we've moved zero degrees. So it's the, it's, you can kind of imagine it as the center of a circle. R represents the radius and theta represents an angle that we are moving along. So we can convert coordinates from rectangular to polar by using some of the following equations that relate uh, trigonometry to rectangular coordinates. The first question asks, what trigonometry equation relates x, y, and r? And we've seen this equation before many times. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And that is our equation for a circle centered at the origin. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared. What trigonometry equation relates x, y, and theta? Well, we know that the tangent of theta if we look down here at this little triangle, and if we imagine that that angle is theta, the tangent of theta equals, at, I'm sorry, y over x. Y over x. So tan theta equals y over x. That's our next equation. What equation from trigonometry relates x, r, and theta? Well, we know that our x values have to do with cosine, so cosine theta equals x over r, or cosine theta equals adjacent, you can say that that's our radius, adjacent over radius. Radius is the same as hypotenuse because it starts at the center and it shoots out to our circle. And then finally, what equation from trigonometry relates y, r, and theta? And that would be sine theta equals 
y over r. To help us understand polar coordinates a little bit better, let's try graphing some of these coordinates on the polar coordinate system. And that will help us kind of see how they work a little bit more. So first we want to plot the coordinate 5 comma pi over 4. So we know that we're going to move along the radius 5 at the angle pi over 4. So the first thing that we want to do is find the angle pi over 4. And we remember that pi over 4 is the same as 45 degrees. So here is 30, here's 60. So we know that 45 degrees is going to be in the middle of those two. So you can always kind of just draw that angle out there if it's not already there. All right, so now all we have to do is start from the center and go up 5 along that angle. So if I start at the center, I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my polar coordinate ends up right there. Now there's multiple ways to represent the same polar coordinate. There's actually infinitely many ways, but we're just going to find three other ways to represent the same exact coordinate. So if we, we know that this is 0 degrees, we know that up here is 90, or 0, pi over 2, we know this is 180, and 270. So what we can also think is, for this first coordinate, we went over pi over 4 from 0, and then we went out 5. We can also say that we went around the circle in a different direction. Say we started at 0 and we decided to go around this way to this angle. We could say that we went negative 7 pi over 4. That's our angle. And then we went up 5. So that would be the same exact coordinate. If I gave you that coordinate first instead of 5 comma pi over 4 and told you to graph it, you would end up in the same exact spot. Let's think of two different ways to represent this same coordinate. If I extended this angle right here, pi over 4, and I extended it this way along the circle, this angle would be 5 pi over 4. So what if I told you to start at the angle 5 pi over 4 and go negative 5? That would mean that you would start at the angle pi over 4, but instead of counting forwards 5, you would count backwards 5. And that would end you up at the same coordinate. So another way to represent the same coordinate that we just graphed is negative 5 comma 5 pi over 4. We're going to represent the same exact coordinate one other way. So if I started at 0 and I went around this way to 5 pi over 4 and then went backwards 5, that would be our coordinate that we just did. But we could also start at 0 and we can go this direction and that angle would be negative 3 pi over 4. And then since we went backwards 5 to get back to our blue coordinate, we would have a negative 5. So, three different ways to represent the same exact coordinate. Let's do one more together and then I'm going to have you try the next two on your own. So we want to graph the coordinate 3 comma negative 5 pi over 6. So if I start at 0 degrees, negative 5 pi over 6, I want to head clockwise. And uh, we know that negative 5 pi over 6 would be pretty close to pi, so it would be right along this angle to 10. Okay? And... Since we have a positive 3, we're just going to count along that angle, 1, 2, 3, and our coordinate would end up right there. 
So now let's figure out three other ways that we can represent this same exact coordinate. So if I went clockwise, that angle is negative 5 pi over 6. But if I went counterclockwise, we can represent this same angle as 7 pi over 6. And then 3, because we went forwards 3 along it. Now what I want to do is take that angle and extend it the other way. And instead of being at negative 5 pi over 6, I'm now at pi over 6. So I can say that I started at pi over 6, and then I went backwards 3 to get to my coordinate. So that would be a negative 3, comma, pi over 6. All right, and we have one more way to represent this same angle. If I started at 0, but instead of going counterclockwise, I went clockwise, I would be all the way at negative 11 pi over 6. So I can say that I started at 11 pi over 6, and then I went backwards 3 to get to my point, so negative 3. I'm sorry, I forgot the negative. Negative 11 pi over 6. There we go. Notice that for these coordinates, you have two coordinates that have positive radiuses. See, we have a positive radius here and a positive radius here. And then you have two coordinates with negative radiuses. Or radii would be better. All right, and then you also have two negative angles and two positive angles. So you know that you kind of did this correctly. If you have one coordinate where both are positive, one coordinate where the radius is negative and the angle is positive, one coordinate where the radius is positive and the angle is negative, and one coordinate where they're both negative. Okay, pause the video and try the next two on your own, and then restart the video and see if you were able to graph them correctly and find the remaining three coordinates. For the first one, you should have started at the angle 4 pi over 3 in purple and then went backwards 1 for your coordinate. Here are the remaining three points. Hopefully you were able to get a negative 1 and negative 2 pi over 3, 1 and pi over 3, and 1 and negative 5 pi over 3. If you didn't get these correct, try it again and recheck your answer. For number four, we start at the angle negative pi over six in purple, but we need to go backwards seven since it's negative seven. So we're gonna follow along the same angle and then count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right there. And here are the three additional ways to represent that coordinate. 